Hi everyone, I hope you're really well. Today I have an empties video for you. I do seem to have quite a lot of stuff to go through, which wasn't really my intention. I wanted to try and keep these videos quite short, so I will fly through everything. Just before we start, in case I look a bit strange, I do currently have an eye infection. Yay! So, I've got most of my makeup on, but no eye makeup at all, which is just weird. I just don't feel finished at all. I have such puny lashes, they need all the help that they can get. So I don't know, I just feel like I look really odd right now, so that explains that. I don't know when I'm going to be uploading this video, so for context purposes I apologise if everything is a bit weird. I have so many videos that I need to upload between now and Christmas, it's actually crazy and trying to fit them in is becoming a little bit of a challenge so I don't know when this video is actually going to appear but I figured it's just an empties video so it's not massively important where it appears. Right so like I said I've got a few things to go through so let's get stuck into what I've got. Okay so the first thing I've got is this shower gel from Lush and I don't know how to pronounce this, it's got a thing over the O, does that mean you make a long longer sound? Is it Gloog? I'm not sure. But this is from a little while ago. What was the date on this? Oh. Used by the 19th of January 2012. I don't own a time machine so therefore this has taken me quite a long time to use. I think it is because it was obviously launched around Christmas. It's a very spicy seasonal shower gel. I'm not even sure if they did this one again. I'm assuming they probably have. Oh. It just smells warm and comforting and beautiful. It smells quite similar to the hot toddy one that they do as well, and the colour of that stuff is amazing. It's bright red, whereas this is kind of like a, a cola sort of brown colour. But oh, it smells spicy and delicious and gorgeous, and it's a lovely shower gel. In fact, it's even described on the front as being warming and spicy, which I would totally agree with. So really nice one to use at this time of year. Next up in my empties, and I won't dwell on this one because I think it's probably appeared every single time, is this face wash from Simple, and it's their Kind to Skin Refreshing Facial Wash Gel. Just briefly, I really like this one because like it says, it's very simple, nothing too complicated in there. So if my skin is feeling particularly sensitive, or my eye region in general, then I reach for this because it's so kind and it just doesn't feel like it irritates. It's got quite a slippery weird texture to it as well, which I really quite like. It doesn't foam too much. Um, it's just really lovely and it's always really cheap to pick up. I feel like Superdrug has this half price all the time, so it's a massive bonus. So really love this, we'll continue to use it. If you have sensitive fussy skin like me, then this is lovely. Next up, I have something that I've been trying as part of my trying to look after my hair journey, and it's a co-wash, and it's one from Palmer's, and this is their coconut formula one. This was weird. It's the first co-wash I've ever used, so it doesn't lather at all, but it does kind of still cleanse your hair in a conditiony kind of way. It's nice and cheap. I think I picked this up for about 3 99 It might have been on offer at the time. But I think full price, it's probably only about $7.99. It's got a really nice, authentic, not sickly coconut scent to it. So it's really nice to use if coconut is your thing. If it isn't, you probably want to steer clear of it. But you get a decent amount in here, but you do have to use a lot. In fact, wet hair and rinse thoroughly, then apply 15 to 20 pumps. Uh-huh. A lot, depending on your hair length. I kind of found that my magic number was probably about 15 or 17 pumps, if I'm being specific. And yes, I stood in the shower and literally went, because that's just the kind of person that I am. I did enjoy using it. I'm not massively keen on coconut fragrances generally. I kind of get a bit bored of them quite quickly. So I did like this, and even though you have to use quite a lot, it did still last a long time. And the way I use this is this was my kind of every other day wash that I did, and then maybe once a week I would use more of a... I want to use the word stripping, but that seems like it was doing damage to my hair. But you know, something that would maybe get rid of all the build-up in my hair, so I'd use something like that once a week. So it's a really nice alternative. What I like about this is you can quickly wash and go as well, so you can use one product, 
don't necessarily always bother with conditioner unless my hair really felt like it was so dry it needed something extra. So just quickly pop this through it, give it a comb through, rinse out, and my hair just felt silky gorgeous. So it was a nice experiment. I am currently trying, there's a Palmer's uh, co-wash in, I think it's olive, olive oil, something like that. I'm currently using that one and oh, I really like that one. So I'll probably have featured that in a best and worst of beauty if that's been uploaded before this video. Next I've got a couple of cleansers and they're both from Mario Badescu. Still don't know how to pronounce that name. No one has still corrected me so I have no idea if I'm saying this name right or not. I've got the Botanical Facial Gel and the Orange Cleansing Soap. The Orange Cleansing Soap looks like there's still some in there which to be fair I could probably get another use out of this but because it's a creamy one I had to put some water in there to try and get the rest of it out so there is a little bit left in there, but hey, I think I can live with the little residue that's in there. These were nice to try. I fairly recently discovered the brand and really loved their glycolic acid facial wash gel, which I would buy again in a heartbeat, but I wanted to try a couple of others from the company first. So I went for these two because they were described for people with skin like I have, but they weren't really my favourite cleansers to use. I think that's probably why they lasted quite a long time because I just wasn't really reaching for them. So now I have got to the end, I think I'm gonna treat myself and I'm gonna just go ahead and repurchase the glycolic acid one because I know I really like that one. You can't use it every day, so I think that's where my simple facial wash will come in handy because I can use that on the other days. But they were okay, I couldn't really get behind them that much because I just I didn't really feel like they were doing that much for my skin and they weren't really that pleasurable to use. There weren't any issues with them, but I just didn't enjoy them as much as the glycolic acid one. Next up I have this from Freedom and it's their Pro Studio Brush Bath Sanitising Brush Cleanser. Apologies, this is like the world's shiniest packaging, so I'll quickly take the lid off. This, as it sounds, is a brush soap, and there's nothing left in there at all. I picked this up from Superdrug, and it was pretty cheap. It's a bit deceptive, though, because you think you're getting a lot more than you actually are, and the packaging itself is kind of smooth inside. Um, it's rounded, so it doesn't actually go down that far. Don't you just love it when people do that? You get 100ml in here, and this has lasted me quite a long time. I did a video on how to get stains out of makeup sponges, what feels like ages ago, and I've not long had this. It has lasted quite a while, but in all honesty, I think any regular soap would probably work just as well. I don't think you need anything fancy or particularly amazing when it comes to washing brushes and sponges. Nowadays, I just tend to grab whatever soap we've got in the bathroom, and if the sponges need a little bit of extra help, then I use some coconut oil on them, which helps lift stains out. So I got through it, but I probably wouldn't buy that one again. Next up, I have got a styling product, and it's this one from John Frieda's Frizz Ease range, and it's their Curl Reviver Mousse. This was such a throwback to the 90s for me, because I kind of felt like everyone put mousse in their hair in the 90s, whether they didn't really have curly hair or they had a perm or whatever it was they were rocking, everyone had this very crispy, crunchy, very set hair look. So it put me off mousse almost for life. It did take a long time for me to want to go back to it again. But I've been trying to find a really good styling product for my curly hair where I can have soft definition, but I just don't want the frizz that usually comes with curly hair. And that's why I went for this, because I thought it would be worth a shot to see how I would get on with a mousse. And you know what? It's actually really nice. I'm not sure how long it would last if I was using it on a daily basis, because I wasn't. I've been experimenting with many different things. I feel like I had to use quite a lot, and because I haven't perfected the whole second day curls, third day curls, all that jazz, because <sighs> let's just not even go there. I feel like I would be having to style my hair every other day, so I'd be absolutely flying through this stuff because I was having to use quite a lot. But what I like about this is you can put tons of it on, and then once your hair is really properly dry and it does feel a bit crunchy, you can just quickly rake your fingers through and give it a bit of a shake, 
and then you get this lovely soft definition which if it does start to go a little bit frizzy I just spritz some water on and it looks lovely again so I really liked this I probably would get it again but I continue to be on my quest to find the perfect curly hair styling product and it's probably going to take a while the next lot of empties I've got are all pretty sad ones to be honest ones that I am sorry to see going in the bin for various different reasons the first of which is this mascara it shouldn't even be an empty because it's not empty can you guess why this is being classed as an empty when it's not really an empty still got loads of life left in it I'm loving using this mascara it's L'Oreal telescopic by the way I'm having to throw it away because I have an eye infection not happy can you tell it's so annoying I just oh, it's been such a long time since I've ever had an eye infection I think I was probably at school actually but there's a nasty infection going around the preschool which of course my son brought back with him although I don't think he's actually had it weirdly he's just kind of given it to me and my husband which was lovely so we've both had it it's horrible waking up in the morning with not even bloodshot eyes we're talking proper zombie pink eye horribleness and then you're having to walk around and continue with your daily life as you have to and people are looking at you like you've just been crying for about 12 hours which is just lovely so yeah I'm having to throw this one away it is sad but I do have lots of mascaras left in my little stash to try out so that's good in some respects so when this is finally cleared up I can crack one of those new ones out which is both exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking all at the same time um, plus it puts me in the position to maybe buy something new because I'll need another backup that's great justification so if you have any suggestions of mascaras for me to check out pop it in the comments and I will take a look next up in my empties that I didn't want to see go is this moisturizer from Estee Lauder it's the advanced time zone moisturizer <sighs> there are a few different reasons why I'm sad to see this go all gone there's literally nothing left it's lasted a really long time it's extremely moisturizing so I cannot use this during the day my oily skin just cries if I do literally I use it at night as a night cream and you need the tiniest little bit and you you wake up in the morning and your skin just feels rested and plumped and just delicious one of the reasons why I'm really sad to see this moisturizer go is because I didn't actually pay anything for it and I believe this stuff is about 55 pounds which that's a lot of money to spring to for a moisturizer there is a bit of a story that goes with this I placed an order with Estee Lauder a very long time ago and it went completely wrong Everything that you can imagine that would go wrong with an order went wrong with that order. I was constantly having to speak to customer service about what was going on with it. It was a nightmare. So it eventually came down to someone saying to me, we're going to send you an apology gift. And I thought, oh, that's lovely. It'll probably be a few samples or something. And then this bad boy arrived. And I opened the package up and I was like, what? That's amazing. They'd also sent me the one, actually, this is for normal combination skin. I mean, my skin really isn't normal, it is definitely more oily. So if you're considering this for normal combination skin and you are a bit more oily, just be aware of the fact that you need the tiniest amount because it goes such a long way. It's, it's a very, very creamy moisturising moisturiser. <laughs> so really sad to see this one go and I'm now going to have to find a replacement night cream I've just realized I don't think I have a backup I have various different facial oils that I like to use at night so maybe I'll just use those instead so the last three empties I've got are all from the same brand so I may as well do them all at the same time and it's this little collection of goodies from Emma Hardy <sighs> I'm turning into such an Emma Hardy super fan this product here, which is a mini version of their Moringa Cleansing Balm, was my introduction to the brand. 
I've got through a few of these. These were out last Christmas and I think I had about three of them for Christmas because I also picked up a few in the sale because they were really cheap. And I just thought, wow, this is actually a really nice balm cleanser. I think it was probably the first balm cleanser I'd ever used. Really, really nice to use, removes makeup really nicely. So I was kind of aware of Emma Hardy as a brand and throughout the year I've tried other things and if you've been with my channel for any amount of time recently then you'll know that I'm in love, love, love with the Protect and Prime moisturiser. That's my new Holy Grail moisturiser. It's fantastic. But I've also been trying some other things so whenever I've been able to get my hands on samples then I've been picking them up. And the two samples that I've tried most recently are the Age Support Face Cream and the Moisture Boost Vitamin C Cream. Because like I said, basically any time I'm seeing a sample of theirs, I'm just grabbing it because the samples actually last a really long time. I got through several samples of the Protect and Prime Moisturiser before I decided I would actually go out and buy it because I loved it that much. And the samples were 5ml and I did get two weeks use out of them, so they do last a little while. It's not like the samples where it's literally one or two uses. The Age Support Face Cream, I think this lasted about a week and I was using this as a night cream and it was absolutely delicious, gorgeous. They all smell absolutely beautiful when you're using them, but it just feels like it's doing your skin the absolute world of good. So that was beautiful. The other one I got was the Moisture Boost Vitamin C Cream which I didn't use any of these during the day because I already love my Protect and Prime and that just works fantastically for my oily skin. But these were just really nice to use in the evening because they are that little bit more thick and luxurious. And this one, oh, it smells beautiful. It's very orangey, but in a very soft, sweet, orangey kind of way. And whenever I use this in the evening, I'd be sat there rubbing it into my skin thinking, what does this remind me of? This smell. It's very similar to the scent of the Moringa Cleansing Balm, so that's really nice. And it's also got something lush producty about it. It makes me think of the moisturiser from Lush, uh, Gorgeous, the orangey scented one, which is really lovely. So sad to see these samples go, but at the moment I seem to be able to be picking up samples quite a lot, so I'm quite happy about that. It's so nice when you get to like a brand in particular and pretty much everything of theirs that you try is really nice. So I'm definitely on an Emma Hardy voyage of discovery at the moment and I'm loving it. So that's it for this empties video. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you did, just give me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you haven't seen my last video, I will pop a link to it up here so you can check that one out. And if you're new here, hi, it's lovely to have you. You can click this link to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of new content as and when it gets uploaded. So it'll be absolutely lovely to have you with me. I hope you're all really well and I'll see you again soon. Bye!